Yes, 17 minutes past eight on this Tuesday morning on OTBM with myself and Johnny Ward. OTBM brought to you with Gillette in association with Movember. Effortless shave, magnificent Mo. You can sign up or donate now at Movember.com. We're going to continue now the uh, reaction, I guess, to uh, action at Anfield on Saturday night. Liverpool one leads two with Gareth Roberts, the Liverpool-based football journalist. Good morning to you, Gareth. How are things? How are things? Morning. Uh, yeah, things have been better, fair to say. Um, not the most enjoyable time at the moment watching Liverpool, but, you know, there's a game tonight, it's the Champions League and all the rest of it, so if you're not up for that, well, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> I'm sure, I was going to say, I said good morning to you. It probably wasn't a good morning, that probably wasn't the right word, but, uh, and, and we will get to the to the Napoli talk ahead, but uh, we do have to look back on that, on that, on that game on, on Saturday night, and I mean, uh, what, what, like, what was your take on it? It was, it was, it was disappointing. It's um, clearly something that's frustrating for Klopp that this keeps happening. That the the city game, everyone is saying, right, this is a a corner turned again, and the performance is, is much better. But to lose to Forest and then to lose to Leeds, um, arguably two of the the out of form teams in in the division, uh, quite worrying. Yeah, it is. It, I mean, there's no dressing it up. Is that uh, the the performances against City? Uh, both in the league and in the community shield are the two standout performances of the season. And then other than that, you know, OK, they absolutely thump Bournemouth, they absolutely thump Rangers. And, and you know, you take those, they're good results. Uh, you shouldn't be sniffy about it, but they're not they're not statements, are they? I think they're games that people expect Liverpool to win anyway. The, the, the City game should have been the statement. That was the, that was the result that got the place buzzing again. And people are like, right, okay, now we're going to see the real Liverpool. So, to to go away from that, and okay, there's the Ajax uh, result sandwiched in between, which has secured knockout football in in the European Cup again. But to lose, as you say, to Forest and to Leeds, they're absolute bankers for Liverpool. Their their games, Liverpool should be winning. And look, you know, without sounding disrespectful to the, to both of those sides, because both of them work work the socks off. It should take more than working your socks off to beat a Liverpool side with the amount of quality they've got. And I include, you know, that they've got injuries and things like that. The sides that they're putting out should still be good enough to beat those sides. And, you know, when I'm getting people I went to university with who support Nottingham Forest getting in touch with me and saying, <laughs> well, I didn't see that coming. Well, neither did I. Um, and then, you know, Leeds, after the Ajax results, I sort of thought, well, you know, we've learnt our lesson. We're always good at home. Saturday nights, under the lights, all of that type of thing. I expected it to be buzzing, good atmosphere. And I thought, you know, I thought that the team would feed off that. But obviously it was a horrendous start. Gave a daft goal away. And then never really sort of got it back from there, really. I mean, all, all this said, though, and it was, a, you know, it was a sucker punch at the end, but it was a sucker punch that you could see coming. You could feel it coming. Um, it wasn't quite right in the ground either with a, with a lot of the support shown, I didn't think. And you could see some of the, fl- the players getting frustrated with that as well. But, you know, it goes both ways that, the, you know, the, the crowd's reaction comes from the players' performances. And that wasn't good enough either. So, you know, when that, when that goal comes, I think a lot of people were like, well, yeah, you know, we've got what we, de- we deserved on the night, which was nothing. Um, so it is, of course, worrying because, you know, all of a sudden these, these positive records that Liverpool have taken a long time to build up are starting to tumble. You know, the first defeat in front of fans since 2017. Uh, obviously, Virgil van Dijk was, was unbeaten in front of fans in the league um, at Anfield as well. So it is worrying when those things start to tumble away because, you know, my argument forever and more uh, when I've been writing, when I've been talking, is any success is always built up around what you do at home, first and foremost, what you do in front of your own fans. Um, and obviously there's been a, there's been difficulties away from home this season for Liverpool, we know that. But when they've spread now into home results as well, which is what we saw with the Leeds game, well, that is a worry no two ways about it. Can I, can I just can ask I... you, Carl, about the, you're saying that the, something wasn't quite right in the crowd. Is, is this the first time in, I guess, almost in Klopp's reign that there you have these rumblings? I just think, um, you know, you, you've got you've got to be sensible about it and say, the reason there's great expectations for this side is what Klopp's done with the side, with the club. Um, and, and look, people don't want to see that fall away. And, you know, you, you dip you dip your toe into social media world at, at the moment and, you know, there's all kinds of kickoffs on there, all kinds of arguments. People having a go at each other about the owners, about the manager, about certain players and all that, that, that type of thing. And it, it, it's because, you know, everyone expected... Liverpool to go again, to be up there again, to be challenging for the title. And so to be out of the title race so soon, it's not even Christmas, it's not even bonfire night. 
Um, you know, of course, that's going to lead to frustrations. Equally, though, I would say these things can be turned around very quickly. And while Liverpool are now not contenders for the title, there's plenty to play for. You know, we go tonight in the Champions League. Um, I think the odds for the Champions League are very interesting if you look at them because Liverpool are still rated by the bookies, if you like. And I think that says something about Liverpool's track record in this competition and also the quality in the squad. You know, with a little bit more luck around injuries, we can get, you know, the best side out on the pitch more often than not and, and certainly have them ready for Champions League nights. Then who knows where it goes? And I think the bookies odds, you know, recognise that fact, whereas equally, you know, you look at the odds for the title and Liverpool are now way out of it, and rightly so. We referenced this earlier in the show, Gareth. Um, do you know, 12 Premier League games, Liverpool have conceded the first goal in eight of those, and on four of those occasions, that was within the first uh, quarter of an hour. Um, like, it's almost becoming too common now to not be a trend. And, and you, 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 like, uh, what does it say? Is, is it psychology? Is it just that they cannot start the game quick, quicker? Because the, the team, as you said, that, that we've come to know with Liverpool winning trophies was a team that started games on the front foot, the team that brought the game to the opposition. And uh, it seems like that's not the case anymore with these slow starts. Yeah, and, and, and look, it all builds up, doesn't it? And, and every time it happens again, I think it almost leads to the possibility of it happen once more, if you know what I mean. So what I mean by that is every time it happens, it, it gives potential opposi opposition in the future a boost. They look at that and they say, listen, get into them early, have a fast start, go at them. They don't like it that way. Equally, Liverpool are probably looking at it saying, we need to keep it tight early, lads, no mistakes and all that kind of thing. That's, that's got a psychological impact as well. And I think those two things clash together there's un th th there is definitely a bit of fragility there at the moment there's no two ways about that it it's far too easy to get through Liverpool's midfield and then mistakes have, cre have crept in at the back as well and look if I'm being perfectly honest with you if it wasn't for the form of Alisson this season so far we could be staring at a much worse situation so it I'm I'm constantly trying to find positives in it because that's the way I try and be about as as a fan and the fact that I'm got you know I'm going tonight I'm going to the match tonight I want to see something good I want to see a good Liverpool result and you, look even in that Leeds game I, I heard the piece that was on before me about Nunes and you know Nunes in the Leeds game for me should score two goals he has two brilliant opportunities both times if he if he had it in him to dink the keeper he scored a goal. Uh, instead he goes a bit percentage both times well one time he tries to take it round the keeper the other time he goes percentage and and, and Liverpool haven't got a goal so it, it's got to be a situation for me of Liverpool taking the chances they've still got players in the side who can do that and I think we're going to have to cop for the fact that for the time being sides can get through Liverpool we're not we're not going to see a Liverpool side setting any records defensively this season so that then puts more pressure on the lads up front but unfortunately as Klopp referenced in his press conference there isn't the opportunity to, to rotate there really currently so we're getting all these games coming thick and fast but there's not too much you can do with it because Jot is out because other players are out you know, and and it seems never ending the the injury situation, and obviously that is why people are talking about the owners and the fact that you know we've not strengthened really, um, or not strengthened enough now for some time. You've got Diaz out as well, so the, the the task is difficult, and the task keeps sort of rolling into each other. So you know, the more you play the same players. That they're becoming more tired. Then you're asking them to go again in another game because there's no other options. They, they haven't got the intensity that you used to see them from Liverpool. They got outrun again at the weekend by Leeds, not for the first time this season. And, and again, that's an odd thing to see. Like Liverpool always worked harder, it seemed, than the opposition. And now the opposition are working harder than Liverpool. And again, that's got to be a concern. The you kind of rested there, Gareth. The schedule is so utterly insane that um, you know, I've, I, you got to have ma for obviously the players. You got to have massive sympathy for the coaching staff here because, like, what are you supposed to do? And like, Liverpool, to me, it wasn't a massive surprise that they couldn't build on the Man City win because, like, they put so much into that, obviously, and like that was a game that you know they weren't expected to win really. Um, but then you're straight back in, and it, like you, you open up the paper today, it's like Champions League is back on again tonight, like three days later, and this is a team that already looks tired. Yeah, hundred percent. And look, you could see it, couldn't you, against Manchester City that. 
they were flying into tackles, that they were determined to show what they were about and that they were bang up for it. But when they tried to go again, you know, a few nights on against West Ham, it was a bit more of a slog. And, you know, we were all coming out of that ground that Wednesday night saying, oh, well, we'll just take the win. Three points is three points. All of those kind of comments were coming out about the match rather than the actual performance. So to then see a sluggish performance on the Saturday early kickoff. And it was like the Saturday was like the early kickoff as well. Like it's it's like and it's it's almost like how do you lift yourself again physically and mentally? Yeah, a hundred percent. And and as I say, you know, you look at sort of Liverpool's roster and the players that could be coming in and doing something but aren't available. It's not helping them whatsoever. You know, there's, there's no Naby Keita. Chamberlain didn't look look anywhere near it when he come on against Nottingham Forest. You know. And, and these things keep piling up. You got Fabinho looks absolutely rackety. He looks like a different player. You know, players are just drifting past them. You know, he, he was one of the best players in his position in the world for me. Mm-hmm. But right now, he doesn't look anywhere near that. And and now you see him sort of he's griping at people on the pitch. He's griping at the manager. He's griping at fans as well. It's clearly getting to him. And on the one hand, you can say, well, at least he cares. But on the other hand, you're like, well, you're not, you're not concentrating on the job at hand if, you, if you're letting the inner chimp escape, if you like, and you're starting raging at the manager and the, the crowd and all this. Just crack on with winning tackles, crack on with closing space down like you were always so good at. Because at the moment, the chinks are light in Liverpool's midfield. Well, well, the, well they aren't chinks, they're huge. And, and play, like I said before, you know, teams are just playing through Liverpool and it's putting too much onus on the, on the lads at the back to keep, to keep them out. You've mentioned, Gareth, already that the owners and the recruitment um, and even just reading James Pearson, the Athletic, talking about Fenway Sports Group over-reliance on Klopp's ability to balance the books and even Jamie Carragher talking on, on um, Twitter, I think it was, at the weekend, where he said, it is plan A or no one in terms of players coming in. That's exactly what Pep Linder says in his book. That's been a mistake. So, like, have there been errors made where they don't go for the plan B option uh, often enough that the recruitment hasn't been what maybe it, it needs to be. Maybe the injuries have highlighted that to, to, to a degree, but clearly something is awry with, with the recruitment. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it does seem that they've sort of <clears throat> spun the wheel uh, one, one time too many here now. And, and, you know, there's too many players on the wrong side of 30 that are knocking around in that squad as well. So, you know, to keep asking them to go again, go again, go again, you know, if they're 18, 19, 20 and they've got the quality that you need, well, you might they might be able to do that. But when they're in the 30s, it, you know, it, it, it's a different ball game, and I think that's what we're seeing. And, you know, it did seem that even during the window, um, you know, they changed their minds, didn't they? Because, you know, they're going, for, they're going for players at the start of the window, not getting those players, seemingly giving up and saying, OK, we'll leave it. And then at the very end, panicking, getting Artur on loan, who had a questionable injury record, and now he's injured. Um, so, you know, that that doesn't look like great forward planning all round. And, you know, I think everyone's got to take some responsibility. 100% the owners, 100% the, the, the owners should be putting more money in, backing the manager, being realistic about, you know, the game they are in as much as possible. And I think sometimes they are overly conservative. But, you know, equally, maybe this time around, you know, Klopp's been a little bit too loyal to some of his great servants. You know, there are all the cliches in Liverpool's past about letting players grow old on other other clubs' books and things like that. And look, you know, Milner's come in, done a great job against Manchester City and deservedly took plaudits for that. But you can't ask him to play three games in a week. Mm-hmm. Um, Henderson doesn't look capable of playing that amount of football at the moment either. Fabinho's looking gassed as well. And then you've got, you know, Keita and Chamberlain who are, who are very rarely available. Um, so, you know, and then you're reliant on, on younger lads and this is what I mean about all the issues rolling into each other. You know, all of a sudden, Curtis Jones was called from nowhere to play against Nottingham Forest after the ear infection for Thiago, and he didn't re- he didn't look ready to go to me. And then and then all of a sudden, he's taken pelters now from fans for not playing well. That seems to have affected his confidence. And then he he couldn't do the basics in in the game the other night. So, you know, all of these things, these issues, I think you said before, you've got to have some sympathy for the coaching team right now. I would totally agree with that because all all the talk about, you know, transfers and money and all that, that's great. And and, and hopefully Liverpool listen or the owners listen and do something about it in January. I think that that needs to be said as well, Shane, in the sense of it's very possible, if not probable, that Klopp's Liverpool managerial career will end in failure in the sense of the end of it, even though it's been amazingly successful. But you need to... 
you need to understand that it's completely irrational what these players have been asked to do at the moment. Like four games in a week and a half at the levels and the intensity that you're asked to be playing. And fair enough, he should have younger legs. But, you know, as Gareth says, there have been a lot of extenuating circumstances there. You've got to, you know, sometimes you have to divorce yourself when you're watching these games twice a week, three times a week and say, this is not natural. And, like, they shouldn't really be asked to be doing this in the first place. And that's exacerbating the issues that Klopp has, I think. Yeah, I think that's that's the thing, Gareth. Is that like the players are frustrated as well because <clears throat> I think there was a moment on on Saturday night where uh, I think maybe Harvey Elliott made a slight mistake and the crowd got on his back and then Fabinho was kind of gesturing towards the crowd to to get off his back uh, and and those are things you just didn't see with with and then you have Klopp as well who's kind of tetchy in press conferences, understandably because he's not getting the results that he feels the team deserve. But when you're seeing moments like that, chinks in the armor, as you say, like. It's concerning, but it, but it's clearly something that is affect, affecting the players as well. Yeah, hundred percent, and it will do, won't it? I mean, you know, especially when they've experienced what they've experienced and done what they've done. I'm sure if you were, you know, having a conversation with them in the summer, you know, all the conversations would have been about challenging for the title. Um, I, you know, you did get the sense, I would say, you certainly towards the end of the window, that both the manager and some of the players were a, were, were a little bit concerned about about squad depth and things like that. But, but much of it's much of it it's random as well, isn't it? In terms of when the injuries come, who they come to, um, and this is the this is the second season in recent times where where it's been the case that Liverpool seem really up against it in terms of having personnel who are available, and then and then of course that leads to conversations about well, what are the medical staff doing and what are the physios doing and all you know is it? But ultimately, a, a club is is all of these people, isn't it? Including the owners. They've got to all come together, take some responsibility for this current situation and bash it out. Come up with a strategy that gets Liverpool out of here and back where they should be. And look, I, I totally understand the way it's dealt with in the media. I do sometimes have a little cry about the media. Some of it I don't like, but equally I understand that a club the size of Liverpool starting the way they have this season and it's the worst start to a season since Klopp's taken over at Liverpool then of course people are going to write and talk about that. But every time they do, it makes the situation slightly worse and it, and it feels like the pressure, you know, the walls are closing in even more. I mean, you know, you, you look at tonight's game, in a different circumstance, we'd all be saying, well, it's a dead rubber. You know, Liverpool have qualified, Napoli have qualified, we'll crack on. Because of the situation we're in and because of the recent defeats and things like that, you know, Klopp said it's not a game for rotation. Now, why is he saying that? Well, I think he's saying that because he wants to, he wants a win for morale, for morale of the supporters, for, for his own morale, for morale of the players. He, want, he wants some kind of result tonight in that game, which is a dead rubber, but he, want, he wants a positive because another defeat only adds to all this and it adds to the pressure. And then maybe once again, you're seeing players who, who seemingly can't pass to each other and making daft mistakes that you don't often see from professional footballers. Yeah, I think isn't it? Liverpool have to maybe win by, by more than four goals tonight to claim an unlikely top spot in the group. So as you said, it, it's pretty much a dead rubber. But like when you look at Napoli, they're, Napoli are coming off the back of a 4-0 win against Sassuolo in Serie A on, at the weekend. And... They're brimming with confidence. I know. I think they've given back some of their contingent of tickets for, for the games, and the fans recognise that it's a dead rubber. But they're, they're going to come to Liverpool, Gareth, with with every intent of causing further headaches for Jurgen Klopp. So you, you'd wonder, in terms of rotation, I know Ibrahim Akanate has sat on the bench, for example, the last couple of games, and, and he's back from injury. So, like, maybe do we see him tonight, or will there be much in, in in terms of change of personnel? I think certainly Canate. I think. I think. The managers looked like he's been itching to play him. Um, there was a bit of a giveaway comment in one of his press conferences the other week where he said, the medical staff are telling me he can't play a full game. Um, that, that sort of sounded like to me that he wanted him to play a full game and is being told internally no. Um, so he did say yeah, he was likely to start. I think he, he's going to step in for Joe Gomez, you would have thought, who, whose confidence does look a little bit shot and obviously culminated in, in the mistake at the weekend. So I imagine he drops out, Canate comes in. Um, there's talk as well of, of Ramsey finally being available as well. Obviously, he's been injured uh, since his sign and made some um, appearances at you know reserve level, as I still call it, because I'm old. Um, but he could make a, a senior start. I, I, I quite fancy him to come on as a sub, maybe, depending on where the game's gone, rather than starting. But as Klopp said, 
And, and as I said before, there's not too much opportunity for rotation simply because there's not there's not many players available mm-hmm. that you would be dropping in. Um, you know, there's not too much up front, obviously, because we've got two attackers, main attackers injured. And then we've sold Minamino, we've sold Origi, you know, so to all of these sorts of understudies that you may you may have called on in this situation, they're no longer there either. So, you know, I think I think it's it's gonna be very close to the sides that have got the recent results, you know, save for one or two. It's funny, like a lot of there's been a lot of talk, Gareth, about formation and whether it's four two three one or as we saw at the weekend for at times as well the four four two with the diamond. You can talk about formation until the cows come home, but if but if players aren't doing their jobs, then it's irrelevant. And and, and like you saw the defending for the for the Somerville winner and and some of the Liverpool defenders almost like statues. Like maybe they were surprised by how bad Bamford's touch was in the lead up, but. There's just moments like that where we were thinking, Jesus, the, the the fight. And you mentioned, you referenced already the, the running, uh, the fact that Leeds ran so much further than Liverpool, and even we were speaking earlier in the show about the fact that you know at times Leeds were trying to get, you know, Marsh was throwing the ball to his players, trying to get the ball back on the pitch as fast as possible, which is unheard of for an away team at Anfield to to try and you know who's looking for a winner because they feel like it's there. But all those little things add up, and and, and there's just concerns, but like a lot of focus on formation. But at the end of the day, it comes down to effort. Yeah, effort and and I would say form as well, um, because you know one thing Liverpool have been able to do, you know, even in recent times, is the, you you've been so sure that you're going to get seven out of ten or more from certain players, and we've not been getting it from them. I and mean, you know, to be talking about Virgil Van Dijk as a man who's quite regularly made mistakes this season seems absolutely bananas when you compare it to you know what we've had out of him since he signed for Liverpool but that that is the reality he hasn't been playing well then you've got Trent Alexander-Arnold who's been so central to what Liverpool have done over the last few years you know you've seen him rested and brought it brought out of the team and things like that again that is that's unheard of it's Robertson now for me is starting to come back to to the form we know and love from him which is a huge positive for Liverpool but you know, again, we've sort of missed the real Robertson, and and it seems like a lot of them all at once have had a huge drop off. I mentioned Fabinho before as well. You know, you take Sadio Mane out of the team as well. You put Darwin Nunes in, and you know, it feels like he's finding his feet, and his teammates are finding his feet. You know, in in terms of how he deals with how you deal with him around him. You know, the the piece before mentioned, didn't it, sort of, you know, some of the runs and stuff he seems to get in other people's way at times. And I think that's totally understandable. I wouldn't put that down to, you know, a problem, a fault on his side. It's more, he's new to the side still. He's still relatively new. He causes problems. But, you know, Liverpool don't look like, it's not systematic anymore from Liverpool. It's not that machine-like, you know, performance from them. You know, four wins out of 12. You think about um, you know when when they started the season, when they went on to win the league, like they were they were unbelievable. And they just blew everyone away, and it was all done by Christmas mm-hmm. or just after. Um, you know this time around it's the complete opposite. But like as I said before, it, it's a strange season as well, isn't it? We've got this you know all these fixtures pushed in before December the twelfth. We end that we we end that run with the Southampton game at home. Then we've got the World Cup. Then we've got a transfer window where the owners can show, you know, we can still go out and buy someone, hopefully. And then it's sort of, well, we all have a look again, don't we? Because where's everyone going to be then? It's hard to say what injuries will happen at the at the World Cup, who, you know, what, what form will players be in. There's still a huge chance for Liverpool to, to do something with this season. Um, you know, there's no doubt about that, but 100% there's work to be done psychologically, getting players fit, getting players bought... Getting some players out as well, I think, is probably key. I mean, we keep talking about the owners, but we know that they like to balance the books. We know that they don't like a bloated squad. I think we've got to get some players going out the other way now as well. Gareth, great stuff as always. Thanks a million. Enjoy the match tonight.